I personally love the work of Paul Clay. I feel a very strong affinity with it, not least because Clay was a musician and played the violin. And you can see that musicality come through his art. And the pulsing rhythm of these compositions in the tonality of his use of colour and also in the way he builds his compositions through layers of textures and different types of media which bring this sort of symphonic composition together which is so incredibly compelling. We're very excited that within the spectacular Solinger collection are five very rare and superb works by Paul Klee. Paul Klee was a Swiss-born German artist whose career spanned the first half of the 20th century. He was famous for his involvement with the Bauhaus in Germany up until 1933, and he was a key artist of the modern movement in Europe. Well, this group of works is really wonderful because they provide a really unique insight into Clay's development as an artist. How he picked from the many different movements in art that were going on in Europe at the time, in the teens with Cubism, in the 20s with Surrealism in Paris, in the late 20s and early 30s with the Bauhaus School in Germany. But also importantly, they fit so well in the Solinger collection because they also lay the seeds of what is to come with abstract expressionist art in America after the war. Within the Clay Group, we have three works that come from 1918-1919. His Tunis trip of 1914 was to have a seminal effect on Clay's work, and these works from 1918 and 19 show that so clearly. This really brought into his art the explosion of colour, kaleidoscopic imagery, the abstract calligraphic lines, and brought this layering of ideas and imagery that so defines Clay's poetic works of this period. Very often he will incorporate random letters, stars and the moon, different iconographic symbols that together form this layering of imagery, rhythm and colour that is Clay's unique world. The other two works in the group, which come from 1929 and 1931 respectively, are defined by a more abstract geometric style. We can see clearly the influence of the Bauhaus with the domination of architecture, but also we see the influence of Clay's trip to Egypt in 1929, where he saw the flat plains of the Nile and then the sand around it. And you get that sense of space and landscape in both these works. Stylistically, of course, there are many different elements coming together, not just the Bauhaus, but in the 1931 work, we see Clay's own unique form of pointillism. You see his dabs of colour in gentle gradations uh, spanning the whole composition in a wonderful, almost abstract way. The Clay group within the whole collection form a wonderful jewel-like, intimate scale group and make that bridge between Europe and America so eloquently.